Before we start, I need to point out that this story was originally written as a sequel to James Cameron's blockbuster movie, Aliens, but when Alien 3 was released, the story no longer fit into the canon of the storyline. It was re-released in an edited version, where Hicks and Newt's names were changed to Wilkes and Billy, and were seen as new characters which allowed the stories to remain canon in the expanded Aliens universe. So you can treat these characters as new characters that lived similar experiences, or you can see it as the sequel that we never got. It is the updated edited versions that are covered in this video. The story begins with Billy remembering Corporal Hicks and his colonial marines saving her from xenomorphs 13 years prior. She now spends the nights in a mental health facility because of the nightmares of xenomorphs. Corporal Wilkes is taken out of his cell and taken to a meeting where he is shown a video of a xenomorph attack. It shows a derelict vessel called the Junket that is floating in Earth's orbit. They investigate with a probe and they are then killed by an alien that hitches a ride on that probe. Wilkes agrees to head back to Rim and fight aliens once more, and is told to bring back specimens. Wilkes visits Billy and tells her that he is heading back to Rim. Billy asks him to take her with him, but he refuses. Billy is dragged away for briefly mentioning her medication, which is not allowed. When back at base, Wilkes is questioned about the plasma rifles that he is loading onto the Benedict. They are ordered to be removed, which annoys Wilkes. Meanwhile, Billy's doctors decide that she needs a type of lobotomy to be performed, and she has no say-so in the matter. When Wilkes finds out what is going to happen to Billy, he breaks into the mental health facility and helps Billy to escape. Wilkes smuggles Billy onto the Benedict prior to takeoff, and soon after the shuttle launches, they head for Rim. Two company men discuss Patrick Massey who killed his own wife and child when they stumbled upon the confidential information about the Xenomorphs. At a facility in Houston operated by Bionational, the pilot of the junket escaped via pod, is collected and has a facehugger attached to his face. People in the surrounding 50 mile radius begin to have vivid and bizarre dreams about the Xenomorph. Dr. Arona comes to the conclusion that the alien can psychically interact with other species. Salvage is a cultist preacher that is obsessed by the alien. When a technician tries to warn him that the government are aware of their broadcasts, Salvage gets angry and threatens the technician and forces him to continue broadcasting. A crew member on the Benedict is murdered by another crew member and then ejected from an airlock. As the alien is about to have his chest burst, one of the executives runs into the sterile room to see the birth first and The pilot breaks free and grabs the executive. Both men are killed when the alien bursts from his chest. When one of the scientists attempts to kill the alien, the second executive shoots him dead. As the alien grows in captivity, they soon realise that it is an alien queen. On the Benedict, Billy gets close to one of the crewmen named Boiler and they fall in love. Salvage convinces his followers to break into the Houston laboratory. Once inside, he approaches the Queen and allows a facehugger to attach itself to him. His followers are also attacked by facehuggers and used as hosts. It is revealed that Captain Stevens is the one murdering crew members as he kills the crew member manning the controls. Massey and his men board the ship and Wilkes is captured after finding that all of the firing pins have been removed from the guns on board. Massey kills Captain Stevens. The marines are sent down to Rim to collect an alien specimen. On Rim, the marines find an alien nest and are quickly attacked by them. Billy, now armed, threatens Massey and tells him to let Wilkes go. He attacks Billy when she is hesitant to shoot Massey. A fight breaks out between them, but Massey fails to shoot Billy and ends up being shot to death by her. Boila and the other marines refuse to head back to the Benedict and continue with their mission. When Boila is ripped apart by an alien, both Boila and Billy come to the realisation that he is an android. The few remaining marines get Boila back to one of the Benedict's shuttles. The shuttle is overrun with aliens and it looks like the remaining survivors are about to die, but a space jockey saves them. 
The space jockey does not speak, but Billy does begin having visions of the space jockey's experiences with the aliens. Back on Earth, they try their best to hunt down the aliens, but keep failing as they reproduce far too quickly. Wilkes and Billy receive a transmission about the current crisis on Earth, but still decide to head back. When they return, Wilkes tries his best to convince them not to use nuclear warfare and fight another way, but they refuse. The aliens attack and break into the base, so Wilkes and Billy retrieve Bwala and hastily steal a cargo ship. They have managed to escape Earth, but have no idea of what to do and where to go. Wilkes, Billy and Bwala are still travelling through space on the cargo ship that they stole called the American. Wilkes watches the transmissions that are sent as Earth is taken over by the aliens. Billy has a very vivid nightmare about the aliens. As people began having nightmares within a 50 mile radius of where the Queen was being kept on Earth, she begins to panic and is worried that aliens are on board the ship and tells Wilkes. Wilkes agrees to check the ship and arms his weapon which is low on ammunition. While checking the ship, they find signs that something has been on board, as well as a door melted by the aliens' acid blood. Upon further investigation, they find that men in hibernation chambers have been killed. An alien makes its presence known, and Wilkes and Billy put up a fight. In an attempt to get rid of the alien, they open the airlock but Wilkes gets trapped and is almost sucked out into space. Billy manages to get the door open and is able to pull Wilkes back into safety. Returning to the control room and looking over the security cameras, they find that two more aliens are on the ship, so they open up the airlock in the room that they are in and suck them out into space. This doesn't kill them, as Wilkes is still weak from almost being sucked out of the vacuum, Billy has to suit up and check the exterior of the cargo ship. She is attacked by the first one which she kills easily, but falls down into the ship's thrusters where she finds the second one. As Wilkes has fell unconscious, Bwala fires up the thrusters and kills the second alien. When the cargo ship reaches its destination, they find themselves on a military base run by General Spears, who is mad at Wilkes and Billy for killing his specimens. Wilkes and Billy are held in a cell not knowing what to expect. Three of General Spears' men do not like the current leadership and decide to rebel. They kill one man and steal a tractor. When General Spears finds out about Wilkes' history and expertise with the aliens, Spears releases them from their cells and allows them to wander around the base freely. Billy finds a control room and watches a transmission from Earth. The young girl reminds her of when Wilkes saved her as a child. The three soldiers arrive at the nearby colony and find that it has been overtaken by aliens. They are attacked and two of them are killed. One of them puts up a fight and manages to escape after being burnt by the aliens' blood. However, General Spears is waiting outside with his men and drags the man back inside to the aliens. General Spears' second-in-command tells Wilkes that General Spears is insane and he tells them that the colony was allowed to be overtaken by the aliens on General Spears' orders. Wilkes has shown footage of General Spears teaching the aliens queen as if she was a dog. Using fire to burn aliens, they stop attacking the humans. Wilkes is furious that General Spears could be so stupid. In a rage, he destroys a computer room and tries to rally General Spears' men against him. It doesn't work and they attack Wilkes and accidentally free the alien queen. Billy and Wilkes barely escape but manage to survive the onslaught of aliens. General Spears and his men capture Billy and Wilkes and Boala watches on a monitor, unable to do much. He crawls to the control room. He is left alone by the aliens because he is an android so he makes it to the control room. General Spears second in command goes for one of the men's guns and fails. He is killed, but it allows Billy and Wilkes the opportunity to escape. They are helped by Bwala in the control room, who closes an emergency pressure seal door between them two and the men that are trying to kill them. Wilkes and Billy have just enough time to get on board General Spears' shuttle as he is taking off and leaving his men behind. 
General Spears seals up his door, preventing Vox and Billy getting to him. The days pass and General Spears stays in the cockpit, and Billy finds a computer that allows her to talk to Boile, who tells her that he loves her. As they draw closer to Earth, they receive a transmission from the space station, warning them that Earth has been lost. Wilkes and Billy take a gamble and use an escape pod to try and reach the space station. Spears lands on Earth and commands his trained aliens to attack the aliens that are taking over Earth. He soon realises that he never had control of them and that the Queen just played good to get them back to Earth. The aliens attack General Spears and kill him. Billy and Wilkes make it to the space station and Billy is relieved to see they are watching a transmission of the young girl on Earth and that she is still alive. They are pointing out the aliens are building some type of nest. Wilkes and Billy are surprised to find Ripley on the station, who was looking to put an end to the aliens. The aliens are still dominating planet Earth, but the story begins with Ripley on a mission to LV-426, with a new set of colonial marines following the events that took place in the movie Aliens. Things quickly go bad as the colonial marines are attacked by aliens. A gunfight follows and Ripley and a couple of marines blow the area killing a large amount of aliens and escape LV-426. The story then jumps forward to after the events of Nightmare Asylum. A transmission from the survivors on Earth from Nightmare Asylum shows them stumbling into a nest where they are attacked by aliens. Ripley has a plan which involves everybody working on a large prison. They have a supply of dead aliens that they use to fortify the prison. Their plan is to capture the Queen Mother on Xenomorph Prime and take it to Earth where they will initiate the explosive weapons that never went off at the end of the Outbreak storyline. The satellite stations start to realise that the aliens are terraforming planet Earth to suit their needs. The crew assemble exosuits by using power loader technology. When arriving on Xenomorph Prime, they are attacked by aliens and several marines are killed by the aliens. Ripley comes face to face with the Queen Mother. She fights off the alien and lures her into a trap and captures the Queen Mother alien. Ripley saves the remaining marines as they are surrounded by hundreds of aliens. When they return to Earth, Billy takes a shuttle and attempts to save the young girl, Amy, that Billy has been watching the broadcasts of. The crew release the Queen Mother and put their plan into action. Ripley helps Billy to save Amy, regardless of them running out of time. They manage to get Amy out of the alien hive, but their plan to detonate and kill all the aliens around the Queen Mother fails. <laughs> 